Mabuhai Kamustika, welcome. How are you? This is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea, and here is part two of At the End of Your Hope, Bible verses that help me marry, and these verses may help you in a situation totally unrelated to marriage. Um, just wanted to make a video series about this, and the topics more or less will be centered around not worrying, being thankful, love, and God is good, and probably some others that will slip in there along the way. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. By the way, I, I always forget. Please uh, subscribe to this channel if you're interested in any of this content. Um, I, I don't press that. I don't even think about it. I just try to focus on what I'm saying and, and what I think you, you might benefit from, you know. Yeah, a lot of this channel is about men helping a Filipina because that was so important as part of my journey. But another part of that was I was single a long time, and that's just how it ended and what I want to do with how it ended. But to encourage people to not give up, you know, especially in finding a wife, I want to share these verses. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. But now says, this says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. And this for me was just um, some confidence uh, to feel settled that no matter what I was through, God was there. You know, it's been said God goes in front of us to uh, lead us, and he's at the, uh, behind us, he's at our side to protect us, uh, to guide us, and, you know, he is everywhere. We don't see him, but he is spirit, and he is everywhere we go. God is with us. So Isaiah 43, 1 and 2 gave me some comfort. And then, of course, the love chapter I've talked a lot about, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. I thought it was great to actually have a definition from someone I could trust, God, and what love was. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So one of my videos, um, I do kind of try to break down that verse some because I think it is uh, critical for a person to uh, have some understanding of that, that it's trying to get married. 1 Peter 4, 8, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Above all, love each other deeply. Ephesians 4, verses 2 and 3, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Bear with another in love. It's so easy to lose patience with someone. Could be my wife, could be a parent, could be a friend, co-worker. Uh, we have to bear with them, even though we don't feel like it. We have to be patient, and that is part of loving. You know, bearing with one another in love. Ephesians 5.20 Boy, this was a tough one when I first heard this. Ephesians 5.20, Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always for all things. Not just in all things, but for all things. And I'll tell you what, it takes a lot of you know, faith to say, God, I thank you for you know, this struggle of being single. I know I'm supposed to marry I know that's what your word tells me to do. I'm going to try to get married. I, I'm praying to you for a wife. I'm looking for a wife. However, you know what I don't know, and that's why I'm going through this struggle. And so in, in faith here, according to this Ephesians 5.20, I can thank you for this, this struggle, this trial, this trial that I hate with all my might, that I'm going to try to do everything I can to get away from. But while it's important to remember we, we want to get married, it's also important to remember that God has a reason for why we haven't. And it doesn't have to be because you're, you're not the marriable sort. If you really want to be married and believe you know, God has called you to marry, then you should pursue that. But you know, we're all going to get married at different times. And um, 
you know, I can look back after all those years. I won't bore you with that for maybe why God was taking so long. But he knew, he always did know, and he knows now whatever trial you're going through, he knows what's going on and he wants us to be thankful. I know we want to see how it's going to end, when it's going to end. We want to know how this makes sense at the moment. But we have to trust and we can be thankful. We can say those words, God, I thank you for the struggle of being alone. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I don't know how it's going to end. But you tell me to be thankful, so I, I, I will be thankful. And please help me to be thankful because I know I'm supposed to. So Ephesians 5.20 was an eye-opener for me. There's Ephesians, uh, rather, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, in the midst, it's a little bit different than for all things, I think, but in the midst of all your trials, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. It's one of the few places, it seems, in the Bible where God says, this is my will. And one of them is his will as we afford fornication. Uh, his will is that we, we become saved. His will is that we are thankful, you know. That's, that's some of those ways that God says outright is his will. First Chronicles 16.34 Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. This is why we can be thankful to God in the midst of trial, because he is good. He is loving, and that love will be forever. Now, I have to remember that he wants us to be... Um, obedient to him. He call, wants to call us out of the darkness that we're in. And when he does that, he will give you um, eternal life, you know. Um, you know. It says, he that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. He was God. He was man. He died for your sins. He rose again. And, and he is ultimately to be followed. That's where it starts, you know, to have everlasting life. I know that goes against the grain of the world, but that is the way it starts. Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his course with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. And his name, by the way, is about his character. If somebody hears your name or a business, this is a business by this person's name, they're, they're saying, ah, I know that person. That's their character, so this is a good business. If they have a shady character, they're going to have a shady business. So your character is your name. And we are to enter his gates with um, with thanksgiving, his course with praise. What reminded me about this verse, or why I wrote it down, was because I would be going to church miserable and grumpy, you know, because that was not a good place for me to be. It seemed, it was very distracting, and I, I had to learn to go to church and be thankful, and I don't think I was ever really good at it. There were good times and bad times. But Psalm 100, 100 verse 4, enters gates with thanksgiving and his course with praise. Philippians 4, verse 6, here's one I needed to hear. Be anxious, or excuse me, be not anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So if you're single, God is saying, don't be anxious about it. Trust in me. God is saying, I'm working a work. I can get you married any time, but I have a reason for it. I'm doing something right now. We don't want to... Uh, short, uh, we don't want to sabotage that. We want to let God do what he's doing and not prolong it. He says, don't be anxious because we can trust God, a God who knows everything that's going on in our lives, as we shall see, and is good. Be anxious about nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let re your request be known to God. I can pray to God for a wife, but I have to be thankful uh, I can't demand a wife. I, I have to be thankful. Thankful for what I have. Thankful that he knows that, uh, that I know that I need to marry. Thankful that I have his word to guide me. Thankful that I have him to help me find a wife. Thankful that he can guide me through this trial. But I am to be thankful. Job 1, 21. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you look at Job chapter 1, you'll see some horrific things that um, God allowed Satan to inflict on him. Um, but he had the right perspective 
in that terrible time, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gave, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's Job 121, Psalm 145, verse 3. I like this one. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. I like these verses that make it, like 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 12, we did the last time, that make it, that overstate something, makes it easy to understand. Um, great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Psalm 143, 8 through 10. I can still remember the pastor that told me this verse. This might have been the first memory verse that I ever had. A um, long time ago. It says, Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto you. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Psalm 143, 8 through 10. Now, I didn't think this pastor was really well informed about singles issues. You know, not everybody is, not everybody can be. But this was a good verse because it showed me that um, I needed to be aware of God's loving kindness. I need to trust him. I need to teach him to guide my path. Show me where to go, to not go there, but where do you want me to go? You know, lead me, teach me. Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So there were days I woke up reciting this. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Philippians 4 verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Psalm 68 3 adds to exceedingly rejoice. 2 Timothy 1 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Certainly when you're going through the valley of singleness, you may have a lot of fear, but and God understands, but he doesn't want us to fear. He wants us to trust him, look for his uh, teaching, look for his leading, his direction. Keep looking for a spouse. There's, you know, the Bible talks about diligence, too. 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. In other words, I shouldn't fear that I was still single. I shouldn't fear that God had something against me. I shouldn't fear that I would never find a wife um, because God's love is perfect and, and therefore it, it casts out fear. How can you trust somebody that you are afraid of? You can't. Matthew 6, 25. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you will put on. So if God is concerned about the very basic necessities, surely he's concerned about the bigger things like relationships and marriage um, because he is concerned about everything and uh, Philippians 4 verse 6 looks familiar because I already said it so we don't have to do that one again just a, a few more John 14 27 let not your heart be troubled neither let it be ashamed try not to be going through life with a single person you know all aggravated and nervous and angry and agitated and troubled you know we need to take these things to God in prayer Nehemiah 9 verses 5 and 6 kind of gives us a perspective of the God that we pray to blessed I remember when I heard this one too I was at church uh, some morning I remember the room and the location and all of that and uh, the people milling around but this was the verse that was uh, mentioned and so I thought I better write this down this is a long time ago Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. You are the Lord, you alone. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and all that is in it, the seas and all that is in them. And you preserve all of them, and the host of heaven worships you. There's a lot of things we don't understand about our lives. But if we are saved, we have a God we can trust in, and a God that we can worship, even if we are not being revealed things that we wish we knew at this time. Uh, it's good to recite, you know, that God's name is glorious and, and blessed, and his name, his character, is exalted above all blessing and praise. This is somebody that you should be able to trust. After all, the host of heaven worships him. One more along these lines, Psalm 73, 25 
Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So the part there, nothing on earth that I desire beside you, is just a matter of perspective. We can get so caught up and lost in our own world, our own hurts, our own reality, when we uh, need to be thinking about you know the God that we worship and he should be our greatest desire because of who he is and what he can do for us and, and what he already has done for us actually in the sacrifice of his son. So I'll have part three coming up next. We'll talk about uh, three or four different topics about being at, uh, when being at the end of your hope. So stay tuned on Love Beyond the Sea. <laughs>